Um, maybe what's one more goal that you can think of that between now and the end of spring training, if you were to do this and do this consistently, that would give you the best chance of breaking with breaking camp with the team? Um, not sure if this kind of goes in with efficiency or like how to it would categorize or word it, but so Archie Bradley, new new reliever that we have, who's with the uh, Diamondbacks last year, Diamondbacks and Reds. But uh, one of the, his big things is kind of knowing yourself as a pitcher. So kind of gaining that that relationship with yourself on the mound to where mm. you know, like, I'm not going to be, I'm not the hardest throwing guy. I'm not going to have the nastiest stuff. I know I can't just paint the corners. So why even bother trying to paint the corners? Just split the plate in half, you know, pitch in halves rather than trying to pitch in quarters to where you're, the room for error is so small that, you know, if you try to, if you're going for that outside corner very first pitch, you miss, you, know, you get behind right away. Then you're constantly like, okay, well, you try to make that same pitch again. You miss again, you fall behind even more instead of knowing yourself that, okay, I'm not a corner pitcher. So I just need to, you know, attack the zone, you know, straight up. Or um, I don't have the nastiest breaking ball. So why am I trying to make it even nastier? And all that's doing is making me fall behind, just throw something that's going to be in the zone at the best of my ability or the best of what I can do. And, you know, let, you know, everything else, you know, happen on its own. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So did he give you an example of who he was always trying to be or what he was trying to be before and now as he's gotten better and he's he's owned his own craft how that's changed and he just believes more in himself than trying to be someone he's not yeah so um when he was a starter i guess coming up to the minors um i mean i, I told him like i really re related to him right away because so much of what my uh, I would say so much of my uh, progression and kind of um, develop. Oh, there you go. So much of my development has been to uh, minimize the amount of pitches I throw per batter or throw per inning. Because a lot of it was there were so many big misses because you know trying to stay on the corners to where my ball moves a lot. So mm. added with the movement and so forth that I was throwing a lot of balls that I shouldn't be throwing. And he he was kind of the same way to where. He was trying to live on the corners to where he was throwing so many pitches, so many three, two counts, so many three ball counts to where, I mean, he was out of the game in four or five innings and he could never go past a certain point. And so I don't, I don't remember if he said when he went to the bullpen or at what point the transition was, but he, um, you know, broke the plate down in half. It was like, okay, I'm either going to throw it to this side or this side. I'm not going to try. I'm going to stay away from the corners. Just let him hit it. And then he said when he really took off, it was... It was either 17 or 18, I believe. I forgot which year he said, but in one of those years, he really sat down and you know looked at some numbers and on a ball pitch like right down the middle, the average like someone's uh, average or whatever was like maybe one, but low 200s if anything under 200. Mm -hmm. So it was not a very good average on balls right down the middle to start at bat. And so he's like, wow. well, so I started doing that. I just started throwing the ball mm -hmm. as hard as I could down the middle, and that's when I really started doing well. And so now he gained that. He's all, and now I have that reputation to where, when you step in that box against me, you know the very first pitch is probably the best pitcher and get that bat because I'm going <laughs> to get ahead, and it's going to be a strike. So you either yeah. put it in play, or you go behind in the count. Then once you fall behind, I know I'm going to put you away. And he's all, that's just my mentality. Yeah, I love it. And I think there's a there's got to be such an element of trust to that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I go back to Mariano Rivera. He really had one pitch for 20 years. He had one pitch. You knew what you were gonna get, and it's gonna be different parts of the zones. He may change up the speed a little bit, but you knew what pitch you're gonna get was gonna be a cutter. And what you're seeing with R.G. Bradley is he trusts himself enough. He trusts the numbers, right? These are probably not like a week's worth of numbers. This is probably mm -hmm. a year or two years yeah. worth of numbers of it's evidence that says, hey, if you do this thing, when you do this thing, once in a while you get a home run hit off you, but a lot of times, 19% of the time, if you're saying they have a 190 batting average, 19% of the time, uh, they're going to get a hit, which means that 81% of the time, they're either going to get a head in the count or you're going to get an out first pitch, yeah. which, is, which is great. 
Um, so when you think of trust, what are some of the things that you need to absolutely trust as you develop your own identity as a pitcher? Um, so, I mean, pretty much going off of last year, my, my approach was literally just have them put the ball in play. And I know I'm not a strikeout pitcher, and I understood that. I think kind of where I'm kind of teeter-tottering right now is that I'm throwing a lot harder, and my stuff is a lot better than what, it, what it's been in years before. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of getting a little greedy when it comes to, like, once I get ahead, it counts, or even when someone steps in there, because I know they're not going to beat me. That's just where I'm at right now. And mm -hmm. I think I'm wanting to put them away when really – I just need to be, you know, I just need to attack the zone to where if it does get, if I do get strikeouts, you know, it happens, but that's, that's not my, that's not my, um, that's not how, uh, it's just not like the tip, the type of pitcher I want to be. So yeah. I think, um, yeah. just trusting, you know, my fastball and trusting that aggressive attack with my fastball. Cause last year out of all the fastballs I threw, I didn't give up one hit on a fastball. Wow. I gave up like like maybe a couple hits on a changeup, a um, couple hits on sliders, a couple hits on a sinker. But my four seam, a pitch that I didn't throw a lot leading up until last year. So in four years of minor league baseball, I didn't throw it a lot because I didn't mm -hmm. have that trust in it. And I didn't really think it was good enough to where I use it in the big leagues and I don't give hmm. up a hit and it's one of my best pitches. Wow, that's great. And I think that's helpful to know those numbers, right? Numbers can either hurt or they can help. And mm -hmm. when you see that the numbers show that, wow, you haven't given up a hit with this and, you know, you can be effective with a pitch that you really rarely never relied on, but you can do it at the top level and do it effectively and efficiently. Typically a fastball of four seam is one of the most controllable pitches. So that's got to be great news to you. And the fact that it's effective is even better. Uh, that's great. So trust that's something that if you as you continue to develop trust in your stuff number one you become more confident um, and then you become more reliable and then those negatives those doubts those fears those worries they get more and more quiet mm -hmm. and they'll still be there but you know what you're trying to accomplish and they get they get more and more quiet because you have a game plan and you don't budge on it so so improving efficiency and trusting yourself. Did did Bradley talk to you at all about how long that took him? Is it is it always evolving, uh, getting to know himself better, or is there a time when it's just like, okay, I finally got this? Does it take years, months, weeks? Um, I mean, I think it's more just. I he didn't really give a timeline or anything. It was just kind of, you know, um, more of the understanding and more of the doing your homework and really working on it to where you know, you pay attention to the number side of it and you see the the proof and all the evidence and, you know, kind of, again, not getting too caught up in all that, but at the same time, putting it to, you know, yourself and kind of evaluating yourself to where, okay, if I have a good fastball, they can't hit a fastball down the middle. So let's work on that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's mm -hmm. still evolving because these all, I still, you know, get caught up sometimes where, you know, if I am going away, you know, throwing a pitch outside, Instead of kind of staying in a uh, a wider scope, I go to a broad mm. scope and you know shoot for a corner, and then right away you know I'll step off, regroup, and then get right back to you know your, his approach. Mm. Yeah, and I think it kind of again goes back to knowing yourself, knowing you need to step off, knowing you need to take that nice deep breath, knowing okay, do I go wide or do I go very minimal scope? Like what is it mm -hmm. right now? And I think, and especially like you talked about this year in particular. Um, probably due to your off-season work, you're throwing harder and things are just coming out a little faster right now. Mm -hmm. So that's another developing of, okay, maybe this year, not 93, 94, but maybe I'm throwing 96, 97. You know, that helps you with a little bit more room for error. So it's always going to be ever developing. And then towards the end of your career, hopefully if you have enough time to, you know, see your skills diminish at the big league level, you know, then you have to, to redial it back and then train. But we can focus on that, you know, years from now. But um, I think you're right. Knowing yourself and then even day to day. Talk to me a little bit real quick about just day to day of like, hey, today I feel great. Everything's feeling good. And then tomorrow's like, I'm, I'm you know, I don't have a certain pitch. 
what's that like to still trust your stuff even if you don't feel it's at your best how do you hide that from the opponent um so i mean one of the biggest things that as far as when it comes to feel one of the biggest things that i always mess around with like when i'm playing catch is trying to find uh a different grip for my same pitch so like uh, my change up like I, there's like three different grips that i have so i know like you know if one just doesn't feel right which with the one i'm throwing now it's like a it's like a split change like it's really truly really different from anything i've ever thrown and mm. i started last year and been working on it all the off season but sometimes i don't get the action i want i cut across it so then i go back to my original the the og one the one i've always had and that's kind of always a minute it place in my hand it's like I, you know, never forgot. So it's always, it's it's more of a not being stubborn. And if something's not working, don't just keep forcing it. It's more mm -hmm. kind of like you said, I taking that step off, regroup. Okay, this isn't working. What what's next? Kind of having that that plan B. And um, before, I would say I was always really stubborn. So like, if a fastball wasn't working, I would just keep on throwing a fastball. And now mm -hmm. it's more of a. You know, if one thing isn't working now that I'm in the bullpen, I don't really have that much, those that many pitches to kind of work with and kind of have that freedom to, if one thing's not working, it's on to the next one type of thing, type of mentality. Absolutely. That's great. And again, just keep, keep playing with that stuff. And um, some days it's going to be there, some days it's not. Some days it's going to be there and you still get shelled, right? Yeah. Some days it's like... I can't believe it. I didn't feel good at all. And I pitched a no hitter, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So also keeping that long-term perspective of like what I'm feeling and the results I get are not always going to match up. Yeah. Um, 